Hello watch lovers from all over the world. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have this uh, lovely watch from Doug in the US. It is a Stova World Time from 1956. And uh, Doug remembers his father used to wear it. And he only found it uh, a few months back. And it must have been stored in the basement for like 20 years. But apparently in a safe spot for the watch. Given that the condition is still very nice. Now, Doug uh, thought maybe the watch had actually never been serviced. But uh, as we can see, there are a few marks, so it definitely has been touched. But another thing that's interesting is that there's a printing error on the dial. Well, let me know in the comments if you see that. Putting it on the time grapher, we see it's actually very good. Straight lines. Of course, not running to time, but... Uh, don't expect that. So the watch definitely has been serviced uh, not that long ago, in running time at least. When we get the watch open, we see the movement, and it has this peculiar uh, spacer ring. I'm gonna look a little bit closer at that. So on the spacer ring, you can see there are two uh, slits and they are bent up to uh, provide a springing effect, of course, but uh, not very common to see. So the movement inside this watch is uh, from a company called Osco which uh, sort of still exists today. They uh, did provide quite a few movements to uh, Stova. Stova still exists and actually does pretty well today. Originally founded by uh, a man called uh, Walter Stoetz and there uh, by the Stova name. It was taken over in the early 90s by uh, Jörg Schauer, who really uh, rejuvenated the brand, and today it's uh, doing pretty well. They're best known for their uh, Flieger type uh, watches, which is also how they really uh, made their name in the first place, as one of the few choices for the German Luftwaffe, so the German Air Force in the Nazi Germany. So IWC actually was the main supplier of uh, watches for the Luftwaffe. Um, they made the so-called A watches, but then the B watches were a few other brands, among them Stova. And these were big ass watches. If you think today's watches look like plates on your hand, then uh, yeah, you should have seen the 55 millimeter watches uh, pilots had. The picture here shows one of those watches with the accompanying compass. Of course, the reason why these watches were so big were not that uh, fashion uh, sort of uh, required it. It was because they were worn on the outside of the uniform, typically on uh, the thigh. So that the uh, pilot could uh, look down and quickly see the time. So I haven't really said much about uh, the movement yet. It's a very straightforward, uh, no-nonsense uh, movement. The reason we've been going back and forth a little bit between uh, the two sides of the movement is that uh, the bridge for the center wheel was uh, more or less stuck. Now one less than straightforward thing is these uh, shock settings. They're called uh, Pro-Tax. And uh, if that sounds like a personal tax program for Windows 95, yes, it would cost about as much headache as well. And we also see that the uh, barrel is a little bit uh, different. Quite similar to the one we found in uh, the rust bucket challenge. So we're actually going to clean the barrel and the spring separately. And then we'll put the rest in the baskets and take them to the cleaning machine.
Now I said we would clean the barrel uh, separately. Did that off camera, basically just degreased it. And the reason we didn't give this mainspring the normal treatment is because of the width of the arbor inside that uh, lid there. And putting mainspring back into the barrel with our hands wouldn't uh, be good for it. So try to avoid that. But the mainspring is in good shape, so that should be fine. And we can oil the oil. Or oil me jewels. Or rather, oil the jewels. Now, when I said that these shock settings uh, are uh, not that uh, straightforward, I mean, they're more eager to ping than a barbecue chef is to uh, put uh, meat on the barbie. And when you have that uh, type of a uh, shock setting, it can be uh, an easy trick. Take uh, the balance off the balance cock. Then you uh, don't have the pressure of the pivot underneath. So uh, then you can more easily put it in. A little bit the same concept as uh, this old story about uh, a truck that was uh, stuck in a tunnel because it was too tall and no one knew what to do about it. And then a small boy said, hey, why don't we uh, let uh, some air out of the tires? It's a little bit that same concept. We're uh, epilaming the pallet fork and the escape wheel. And then we can start the reassembly. Now well, my uh, apologies for the noise in the background. Uh, my colleague uh, just got a few Casios in. And he says he's servicing them, but honestly, I think it's just about anger management. So how uh, Doug's father ended up with this watch in the first place is a pretty interesting story as well. So Doug thinks that his father got it from a friend of his. And his friend was the local Volkswagen distributor in uh, the area. But uh, he was actually German. Dietelm von Eichel Streiber. And of course, being in the US, they called him Diet. And Diet and Doug's father, they formed a car racing uh, duo. Where Doug's father was uh, the driver. And Diet was the navigator. Or it might be more uh, appropriate to call him a motivational coach. Because apparently what he did the most was just to say faster, faster. Or maybe even schneller, schneller. Achtung, Spitfire. Anyway, we're uh, assembling uh, Achilles works as this cool little uh, rocker uh, system. There is this uh, little spring that fits into a slit in the plate helps uh, the whole rocker uh, return to base. Not the system you will see very often, but uh, pretty cool. And uh, the click is also a little bit unusual. It's on the dial side, which is uh, not that common. Anyway, let's uh, finish the story about uh, how Doug's father uh, got uh, the watch in the first place. So back in uh, those days, uh, Stova was a pretty successful brand, uh, doing very well in the US, among other places. Good uh, price to value ratio. So uh, likely uh, Doug's father got it uh, as a gift from Diet. And Doug remembers his father wearing it, so uh, discovering it after 20 years is, uh, of course, pretty cool. So in the case back, there are no uh, markings. So no uh, previous service has been marked there. Uh, but it had some oil and uh, there are quite some marks here and there, scratches. Uh, screws have been... Oh, come on now! Finish with that Casio then, seriously! Sorry. 
so yes, it has uh, definitely been uh, worth. What the? Sorry, guys. I will give uh, my colleague uh, number to a good uh, anger management therapist. Or come to think of it, probably a few calcios is cheaper. Anyway, this little combined uh, plate for uh, and uh, stones is uh, quite interesting. One is for the escape wheel and the other for the pallet fork. Of course, we do not oil the pallet fork. But we need to have that uh, end stone in there before we can put the pallet fork back in. All right, with a little bit wind on the mechanism, uh, we can uh, oil the pallets. Or rather the pallet. We oil the exit pallet, typically. And then we rotate the escape wheel uh, five teeth at a time with these old movements with uh, 15 teeth. So that the uh, oil or grease, if it's a little bit uh, higher speed movement, gets uh, nicely distributed. And then a moment of truth. Yeah, watch starts running nicely. So then we can oil the pivots and put in the rest of the keyless works and uh, put it on the time refer. We should have put uh, the minute wheel in before we put uh, this uh, rocker uh, plate on. We can just loosen it a little bit and sneak it underneath. Well, there aren't actually many of these uh, watches left around. So there's one in the Stova Museum. And there's one for sale on eBay for about $1,500. That's probably a little bit overpriced. But it's a very rare watch, even though it wasn't that expensive when it was new. We we'll see it runs well for a quite uh, inexpensive watch. It does show some variation over time and also a little bit with the positions, but uh, it's still running pretty stable. So we should be happy with that. When it comes to uh, this uh, world time the map, you can see it's a very, very simple uh, way of doing it. It's just a gear that meshes uh, two to one with the hour wheel. And then uh, that meshes with the star wheel on the underside of the world map. And we see that the world map is centered on the North Pole. And Doug lives in Massachusetts, so we're going to try to uh, center midnight on uh, his location, approximately. And it's really hard to keep your uh, fat uh, sausage fingers away from the camera when you're uh, pressing the hands on. I did this one time before and the only thing I saw was uh, how bad my manicure was. So I had a serious talk with my wife that afternoon. But of course it turned out uh, I had to do her nails instead. Her uh, toenails, obviously. But hey, I'm a married man. I know my lot in life. And the second hand has this uh, cool little red tip. I think the main downside with this uh, watch is that it's a little bit small. So the dial becomes a little bit busy. It's only 31 millimeters, so a little bit uh, bigger, maybe 34 or 35 uh, would probably make uh, a little bit of a difference. The crystal had a few pretty big scratches in it, so we do our usual routine of sanding down uh, the scratches and then using a polywatch. The case is in very nice condition. We're not going to polish it with the machine, but we're going to gently do uh, some hand polishing. 
basically uh, taking the oxidation out and making it a little bit more shiny without really uh, taking out any scratches and that kind. There weren't many scratches on the case anyway, so uh, that's all right. And now my favorite sound in the whole world. Now one of the last things we're going to do is to put in the new gasket into the crown. The old one was pretty stiffened up, so not really having use anymore. And there is a little gap underneath that uh, cap on the crown, so we can just fit uh, the gasket. And with the crystal in, we're going to clean the inside a little bit. And then we can case the watch again. We're also going to reuse this uh, lime gasket. It was actually nice and supple still, so uh, looks good with the watch. For the case pack, uh, this solution is actually a, a very good one. Because uh, there's no uh, screwing down onto the gasket, so you're not uh, sort of ripping the gasket apart, as you typically are with the uh, screw down backs. It's mostly used in uh, Russian watches, some French watches. And with the strap back on, the watch is ready to wear. And there we go. A very rare Stova World Time from 1956. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then uh, clicking like and subscribe will really help uh, the channel. We'll be back uh, shortly, as always. Until then, ta-ta.